All right, it's time for your questions and some honest answers. Let's start with this one from Joey. She's a woman. Is it wrong to file for divorce because your husband refuses to work? I work full time to support the family and struggle to pay the bills on just my salary. When I ask him to get a part time job to supplement my income, he makes up excuses as to why he can't work. I'm at my wits end. And after more than 10 years of begging my husband to work, I'm done. What can I do to get this guy to find a job to help support his family? Well, first of all, the Bible is very clear. The Apostle Paul said, if anybody will not take care of his own family, he's worth, he's denied the faith, and he's worse than an infidel. So that's what the Bible says. So this guy, he's, he's a deadbeat. He's not working. And the Bible says he refuses to take care of his family. He's worse than an infidel. So that means you can treat him like an infidel. And I presume, I don't know if you can go through the whole thing of saying this is constructive desertion. I, I don't know if that's a stretch. But you said, is it wrong to divorce him? I, I think you could certainly get a separation and live your own life. This is ridiculous to have to put up with this guy for 10 years. I mean, it's a, what's wrong with him? I agree. He's not really participating in that marriage. Not you know? at all. Yeah. Absolutely. All, all right. right. Here's Mike. He says, teenagers nowadays make technology the primary choice in their lives. I feel ashamed as a teen to see where social media is leading our youth today. I know talking about Jesus is a joke to them, but how do I convince them that Jesus is the key to everything? Well, the way you can teach him is to, is to act like he's everything, everything to you. And uh, the Bible says, and I think it's true, if you train up a young person in the way that he should go when he's old, he won't depart from it. So I, I think that that's, uh, uh, I, I don't know what else to say, except that they will come to the Lord uh, if you live that life before them. We're seeing at Regent University hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of the students who meet for prayer voluntarily on Thursday night, hundreds of them crying out to God, and there is a tremendous revival among the youth. So don't worry about it. Just, But in that case, you could probably introduce them to some people who really love God and get them into that environment, and all of a sudden it'll change their lives. All right? All right, good word. Dan Daniela says, why did Noah punish Ham's son Canaan and not Ham. I'm 13 years old, and I've always wondered why Noah was mad at Ham for seeing him undressed. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Why, why was he mad? Noah's an old guy. I mean, he's five or 600 years old, <laughs> and he gets drunk. All right, after the flood, he, he gets scrapes, and he gets drunk. And so he's drunk, and he's naked. He's not undressed. He's naked, so he's lying there. And the other children uh, have a garment, and they, they back up to Noah so they don't see him, and they drop this garment on. Ham looks at him and kind of laughs. Well, there was a curse on Ham, and uh, his generations, the people, the descendants of Ham are the ones that live in Africa uh, pri primarily, uh, and there's some other people who are uh, from the Ham line that are uh, in, in the Middle East area. Uh, what does it mean? Is, is this an apocryphal story? Uh, Why did he get mad at him? Well, it was just disrespectful to, to be laughing at a naked 600-year-old six, man, and that didn't show the respect that he deserved. Listen, <laughs> I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> You asked me why, why did he get mad? I have no idea why he got I mad. I think you hit the nail on the head with the disrespect. Yeah, well, it was. Yeah. But, I mean, if, mm -hmm. uh, he's the patriarch. He is. Yeah. Uh, all right, go ahead. Debbie says, is it okay to use acupuncture for healing? I'm going to a natural doctor and was asked if it'd be okay with it. If well, I'd be okay. I think, you know, <laughs> I used to have a, a number of horses, and we had an acupuncturist who worked on the horses every couple of weeks, and they were very helpful. There are little nerve synapses, and if they put the little needles in the right place and activate them with electricity or with, you know, movement, it releases those uh, blockages and lets uh, healing flow throughout the body. I think acupuncture is a good thing.